We're going to look now at a new online scam, one that can clean out your nest egg almost in an instant. And unlike other scams, you don't get duped or hoodwinked by some fast-talking swindler. Our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, got a close-up look at how it works. George Rodriguez watched it all happen from the desk of his North Carolina home. Someone had logged on to his Ameritrade account with his password and was selling off his stocks, $60,000 worth. So I was really shocked in you know, watching his portfolio, my portfolio getting traded away from me, you know, and it's, it was very disturbing. Rodriguez is one of the tens of thousands of victims, customers of major online firms whose trading accounts and 401ks have been stolen out from under them. It really doesn't matter how much that is. It's going to be an incredibly, incredibly terrible experience for you. The problem often starts when customers are traveling and using computers at airport and hotel business centers that have been secretly bugged by criminals who remotely plant viruses that record every key typed. You are, in, in effect, given the bad guy your account name, your password, your account number, and essentially the, the keys to the kingdom. Officials say many of the 401k hackers are connected to Russian criminal rings. With the help of a Russian-speaking ABC News intern, we made contact online with one of the criminals, who offered to sell us six different American account names and passwords, including how much we could steal from each account. One Ameritrade for 7000 another one for 2000 an E-Trade account for 1300 um, and a Fidelity account for $50,000. And how much would you have to pay? to get the passwords and the usernames for these? $350. A 21st century version of a bank robbery. So far, the major U.S. brokerage firms have reimbursed their customers, but the fund handling the 401ks for federal employees and the military says it won't do that because it doesn't have to legally. Charlie? Our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, thanks.